Awesome. Thanks, Jimena. So just like um, Jimena said, in about 24 to 48 hours, this video will be on michaels.com and on their YouTube channel. I want to welcome everybody to our class today. Today, Kirsten is going to be teaching us how to do a faux watercolor technique with folk art acrylic paints, which I'm super excited to learn about. We're also going to learn how to um, bind our painted watercolor paper to existing journals and little, uh, you know, books and things like that. So I'm super Super excited. I'm glad you've all joined us today. And I think without, I just want to remind you guys, I'll be in the chat. So if you have any questions throughout the live stream, make sure to comment them in the chat and I can either answer them myself or relay those questions over to Kirsten. Um, so I think without further ado, Kirsten, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, awesome. Hey, everybody. So what they said, we're so excited <laughs> that you're here and thanks for joining us. So I'm going to show you guys what we are crafting. So today, well, really all of the classes, I love to pick a technique and focus on that technique. So today's technique is really simple watercolor. We're using folk art acrylic, um, the same acrylics that we do canvas painting with, that we do craft projects with, but there's so much versatility in the folk art acrylic and you get this beautiful watercolor finish. So we are gonna do both blending colors. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a rainbow with several different colors. Just some cute um, basic shapes. You can see that all of these dots, the lights, the darks are just using the same color, but using a watercolor technique. And then this one is super fun, super abstract, and just letting the folk art acrylics you work as a watercolor and just blend, creating all of these beautiful finishes that you normally only get with watercolor paint, but how easy it is to get with the folk art acrylic. Okay. So that's our techniques for today. I know you guys that have joined us have your supply list, but I wanna make sure that everybody knows what we're working with. So I just have a little stack, a variety of journals that I've collected. Maybe they're half used and I'm recycling them. Great for back to school. My kids love to recover the front of whether it be a school spiral notebook that just had a really generic solid cover. It's so fun to do a creative watercolor cover for your back to school projects. So a little stack of journals, or you can get those later. If you guys just wanna do the techniques, you can cover any journal after this class is over. So we are using just basic watercolor paper. You can get different weights when you're shopping at Michael's and all of them would work perfectly. They usually come in a big spiral. Um, and all I've done is I've cut several different sizes that match the size of my journal. So again, you could cut them early and cut them now, or you could work, it's kind of fun to work on just a big piece of watercolor paper and then cut it after it dries to fit any journal that you wanna cover. Okay, so watercolor paper. For this, I have a plastic plate and I like that it has a little edge because we're using watered down paint. So either styrofoam, glass, plastic, but some type of plate to mix our paints always paper towels. And on this particular technique, I want you guys to have two waters, one water to clean your brushes and one water that stays pretty clean that we'll use to mix into our folk art acrylic paints. And then for the brushes, what I always like to say is you guys had your supply list, but I always like to say have a small, a medium and a large. I prefer a flat brush, so just a small, a medium, and a large. And also you might want a little round brush. And this is a number six, it was on your supply list, but again, it can be a little larger or a little smaller, but just some basic brushes. If you're more comfortable, have a pencil close by. And then we are gonna bind these or cover our notebooks using both hot glue and just a generic tacky glue. Um, so again, if you wanna do that during the class, I'll give you some tips but otherwise you can do that after, after the class. Okay, so again, we're using folk art acrylic and the palette that we're using today is just a variety. And what I love to say is, is this is the palette that I'm using, but any colors that you have will work perfect for this technique. So make the color palette what you guys like best. I have a magenta and I have a light pink, but again, if you have one or the other, water will make a dark pink light. And then I have a turquoise blue and a true blue. I have a light lavender. And then I have an orange and a yellow and just generic or regular acrylic paints. 
but we are going to use them as watercolors. And this is if you had a darker orange or maybe a lighter or a brighter yellow, everything we're doing today would work with any colors. And then I've got a true green and then I've got a navy, which looks really dark. But one of the fun things about watercolors is all the colors get brighter and lighter with this technique. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is just very, very basic. I want you guys to see how a watered down acrylic works on this type of paper. So we're actually gonna do this little pattern, this little pattern, which is nothing more than overlapped circles. Really fun, but it will show you guys how the paint works differently when you're using it as a watercolor. Let me make sure you guys, okay, see, you can see my palette. I'm gonna put just the littlest bit of pink onto my palette. Just the littlest bit of magenta or a darker pink. You could even use a red. And because we're mixing it with water, make sure you guys put some space between your colors on your palette. Otherwise they'll all blend together. A littlest bit of yellow and a littlest bit of pumpkin. So there's lots of unique ways to work with watercolor. A lot of times people wet their entire um, piece of paper, which allows it to blend and shade and just kind of work together. But for this particular technique that we're gonna do first, we are gonna keep our paper dry. I'm gonna dip my medium flat brush, which this is a number 10 into the water and just wet the side of that pink paint. Can you guys see that on there? Totally. And so Kirsten, if you, um, would you recommend using like a paper plate or would you try to stick with like plastic or, or styrofoam? For this, for watercolor, just cause we're adding so much water to our palette, something harder styrofoam glass plastic would be better cause the paper plate will absorb some of it and you'll just have to continue to add water. It wouldn't <laughs> mess up and it wouldn't be wrong. It's just easier on a hard surface. Okay. But you can see I've added a lot of water, probably two parts water to one part paint, just to the edge of this pink paint. But I'm keeping that still intact so that if I want to darken up the color, I'm able to do that. Okay. So not too much on your brush. Dab it on a paper towel if you have too much. And then all I'm simply going to do is very loose and random. I'm gonna do a few polka dots. And one of the tips when doing watercolor is it will dry really fast because this paper is meant to absorb the paint. So you wanna go in there. You don't wanna leave that open middle because it will dry and it will create an edge. But you can see by adding water, you get both the vibrant color, but you get all of those different shades at the same time. Some of your little polka dots can be bigger, some can be smaller. This is a great way to see that. So that's a really light watered down pink circle. But if I pick up a little bit more of that paint right out of the original spot on my palette and just put that on one section of the polka dot, how using folk art acrylic with water, you get all of that great shading. Might do a little one over here. One thing I love about the watercolor paper is the texture. You can actually see the texture and the quality of that paper. Let me see if you guys can see that. See how with just one shade of acrylic paint, you get all of those different colors. Mm -hmm. So pretty. Light and dark pink. Okay, then I'm gonna clean my brush in my brush uh, cleaning water, not my one that I'm going to keep pretty clean. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with this magenta. I'm going to just keep adding water just to the edge of that paint till I get a really thin watered down color. And then I'm going to go right back in and add some more polka dots. If your color is too dark, you can go and add a little bit more water. If it's too light, you can mix more paint into that. 
but just very random. And this is a good spot to see. Actually, you know what? I take that back. We're gonna do it with the orange because you guys will be able to see it better. But just a few different size polka dots. I'm gonna clean off that brush and go into the clean water and do the same thing with the orange. Two parts water, one part paint. It's just kind of a good rule of thumb. This is a good spot to see. So that little pink polka dot, I'm gonna overlap that with the orange that I've mixed. And one of the great things when working with watercolor is you can see how you can layer and see what's underneath. So just that little effect. If we were doing that with acrylics, we completely base coat over that pink, but you can see how beautiful that comes through and creates even a third color. That looks great, Kirsten. And Kirsten, Gail has a great question. They want to know, uh, they said, love that we can rate our acrylic colors for watercolor work. Would acrylic paints work on tote bags or do we have to stick to fabric paints for that type of project? Well, I say, which I hope this is the right thing to say, you can use folk art for everything. Um, <laughs> and there's lots of tips and techniques. So this particular folk art that we have, we have a fabric medium that you would mix with your regular folk art and it would work on tote bags or fabric. But we also have an incredible line of folk art multi-surface paint, which is exactly that. Right out of the bottle, it would work on fabric, it would work for watercolors, it would work on outdoor stuff, on tin and metal. So both, but both are just basic folk art acrylics. And so lots of ways to just use folk art. That was a great question. I'm gonna go back into the orange and I'm gonna layer it on this really dark pink dot, just so you guys can see how versatile. Like it's so simple, but it's just so beautiful. The look that you get, you get that blending, it blends automatically in the middle. And the neat thing about this is the colors are so clean. I love that Kirsten. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth adding as many dots as you want to fill in this piece of watercolor paper. So Kirsten, we have a question. I think people are a little bit confused just because this size of paper is a little bit bigger than the um, polka dot one we see in the top left corner there. Yeah. Is this um, some practice work you're doing or are you planning on shaping this to a notebook later? So what I, what I love to do most is teach you guys the technique. So the technique of watercolor, I'm really doing it two reasons bigger. One, so you guys can see it better. And then what you can do at the end is I am gonna cut this to fit whatever size notebook that I'm using. So I'll probably cover this one. So I'll find my favorite area on there and then I'll show you guys how to make that fit. So you can do it whatever is easier for you. You can cut your paper first to fit exactly or you can just work on a piece of paper that you know will fit, and then we'll piece it together with the area that we like best and cover our notebook. Did that awesome. clear it up a little bit? Yes, totally, thank you. You definitely, the only thing you don't wanna do, it, in my opinion, is I wouldn't cover my notebook first with the paper and then paint on it, because you can just see the angle. Depending on the notebook, sometimes it stays open a little bit, so it might not dry as good. You don't want to work around the edge in the back, flipping it over. So working on flat is always better. It's a great tip. Okay, now I'm just going into that yellow, adding water, making sure it's good and mixed. And I'm going to add more yellow dots. That yellow is beautiful. I know, it looks so vibrant on the screen. Isn't it pretty? I'm gonna overlap that over an orange dot that's already dry, but you can see how transparent and beautiful it just gives you all of those layers. One great thing also about working on the watercolor paper is it's so absorbent that the paint dries really, really quick. Even though you're working with so much water, it dries beautifully. I love when you overlap a color. Okay, so kind of look at it, see if there's colors you want more of. I definitely want a little more of this dark magenta. It's such a beautiful color. 
So I'm adding a little bit more water, pulling that paint out and mixing it. And I'm gonna add just a few of those really dark colors. I'm gonna overlap that. That's actually the same color, but you can see with more or less water, how different it looks. Maybe one little one right there. Always add water if your paint is not moving well onto your paper. Don't be afraid to add a lot more water to your folk art acrylic. I'm gonna add a few more of the orange. I hope everyone's got tons of beautiful dots, lots of different colors. <laughs> I know Emma gets to see everybody's. I love that being on that end of the camera. <laughs> okay, so you have a beautiful polka dot piece of paper, but the neat thing is the watercolor technique is so different than if you did this with just traditional acrylic paint. So now I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna let that dry. Because at the tail end of this, I'm going to show you guys how to accent, highlight, and just personalize all of your watercolor designs with just a basic permanent marker. Okay, so that's the technique for that one. We are going to set that to the side and let that dry. Now I want to show you guys how to blend colors like a rainbow. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get a little bit larger flat brush. This is a number 12. I'm going to turn my palette a little just so I can get a few more colors. I'm going to use that same magenta, that same orange, that same yellow. But I'm going to put a little bit of the green on my palette. I'm going to put a little bit of this true blue. And again, just the littlest dot of paint is all that you need and then a little bit of this light lavender. Okay, so this technique, the only difference is what we're gonna do is we are gonna wet, let me bring that journal in. We are gonna wet this area of our paper. So where the large stripe or the umbrella, umbrella, look at me, or the rainbow, <laughs> where that is, I'm gonna wet only that area of my paper first. And please know with this, this is not something that you have to draw out with a, um, with a pencil. You don't have to draw a pattern. You wanna allow all of those colors to just naturally blend together. So just where that rainbow is, I hope you guys can see this. It's hard because it's just water. I am gonna wet from there to there, all the areas of that, of that complete rainbow. Sometimes the light will allow you guys to see the glare of where I put the water. Let me do it and then I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. Doesn't have to be soaking, but you just wanna make sure it's got a, almost like a base coat of water on it. Let's see if I move that around in the light, if you guys can see that a little bit. Uh, nope, uh, maybe, let's see. Uh, it's hard to tell. Oh, there we go. See how you can just kind of see, I've almost base coated the area where I want the rainbow to be. Okay, and then using that same brush, make sure I've got some of that pink blended. And I'm gonna go along the top section and see when you touch the wet wow. area, it just almost bleeds and blends, but just enough. See how it's creating that softer shade by just allowing the water to carry that. Now let's let awesome. me see if I can hold that up. Ooh. See how it's not just a solid stripe? Yeah. It just kind of does its own thing. You get that beautiful gradient. That looks awesome. Yeah. Then I'm gonna clean that brush and go in that orange, also watered down. And right over and next to that beautiful pink or dark, dark pink magenta, I'm gonna add that orange. And oh my gosh, most importantly, I hope you guys can see how beautiful it just blends. 
It doesn't muddy and it just blends together beautifully. I'm gonna clean the brush, go right back into that yellow that we made earlier and touching that orange, you get that really soft edge though, because the paper is damp, it just blends it together just so beautifully. And Kirsten, okay. while you're completing your rainbow, um, Kevin had a question. Okay. They, they accidentally um, got the wrong paint at Michael's. They got some oil paint and they're trying to follow along with this technique, but it's not working with their oil paint. I said that um, the reason it's probably not working is because our acrylic paint is water-based. So it takes on this water really well, but I just yep. didn't know if you have any tips, if there was any way he could do something close to this with oh. the oil paint. Kevin, I'm not an expert with oils, um, but I do know they don't work with water at all. Emma was right. Um, that's why fine artists use them because they're oil-based. They'll stay wet um, forever. So there's got to be a medium that you add to oil paints, but I don't know what that would be. Um, yes, and if you are so excited about this class and you I still know. want to do it at home, um, you can always watch this class back on demand in about yes. 24 to 48 hours if you decide to pick up some folk art paints. Absolutely, and maybe Kevin, if on the label it says what you clean oil paints with, like I'm assuming you clean it with, I don't know what, um, that may work like water when you add it to your oil paints, but I'm not sure but try that. The reason we love this so much is because it is water-based paints um, and it does work with water. Follow along though, I love what Emma said. You can um, get to this video tomorrow and anytime after and be able to do the same techniques. Okay, so I got the green. You saw how beautifully it blended with the yellow. I'm gonna add water to that bright blue to tone that down and this will be really pretty. As I brush the blue, next to that green, how it just blends and creates that beautiful soft divide between the blue and the green. Now here's an area where I didn't, I ran out of wet paper. So all I'm gonna do is clean that brush. Watercolor technique is so forgiving and I'm gonna brush just water below that blue. You can see it's picking up some of that blue and that's okay, but it's just plain water. And then I'm gonna clean my brush and for my last color, I'm gonna go in and water down that light lavender. I'm not using any of these folk art acrylics as they come out of the bottle. I'm adding water to all of them. And then I'm adding that purple along the bottom. And you can just see how beautifully all of those colors went together. Now, one thing you can always do with watercolors is if maybe you want a little bit more green, you can always do a second or a third coat. And you'll notice each coat is totally different. The way that goes into the blue will be different than it did the first time. If you want it to move around a little bit more, you can always brush over it just with a damp brush and it'll just soften all of your edges. I'm gonna have my orange a little bit darker. So all I'm doing is using that same paint that we worked with, mixing it with the water and almost doing like a second coat, but still allowing it to mix in with all my other colors. I'm gonna do that same thing with this lavender. I want it a little darker and I'm just gonna let it blend into the blue. So pretty. I wanna show you guys this. This is something, and I, it's probably got a traditional real name, but see how when you layer watercolor, it gets that beautiful, I'm not sure you guys mm -hmm. can see it. See where that same color applied the same way has all of that shading and highlighting almost? That's just one of the characteristics of watercolor. Okay, so that is working on a wet piece of paper and allowing your colors to blend together. So we will make this little journal next, but again, I want you guys to set this to the side and let that one dry. And now we're gonna do the most fun. This is such a fun technique, just very abstract. Oh, there we go. Very, very abstract. Okay, so to do that journal, and this is actually great for back to school. This is just maybe a $1.50 spiral notebook 
plain and then you let your kid create beautiful artwork and attach that. It's so exciting for back to school. And back to school for us in Georgia is right around the corner. I think we have what, three weeks maybe? Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna turn my palette just so I've got a little cleaner area. And I'm gonna add the navy blue to my palette. And also this beautiful turquoise. And Kirsten, while you're doing that, um, someone had a question. They wanted to know, could we use this technique for like uh, porcelain or china? So watercolors would, uh, well, maybe on bisque or unfinished um, porcelain, because the great thing about the characteristics of watercolor paper is it's just super absorbent. So your paint blends with the water, but it also um, absorbs into your paper, creating all of these beautiful techniques. So I would worry on porcelain or ceramic, it would just run off and it also would not be durable for that. Mm -hmm. But maybe a bisque, we haven't tried that, but that could be a really cute, um, cute thing to try. The tip is you just want it to be a really, really, really matte um, absorbent finish when you're doing watercolor. And but if great you question. To, yeah, and if you wanted to have that technique on something that wasn't um, porous, you could always like Mod Podge this paper down to a flat surface of any kind. That is a great idea, absolutely. That's a great idea, Emma. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna go back to just that basic medium-sized flat brush. I'm working with the number 12, but rule of brushes is use what feels comfortable for you and what's right for your project. If you're doing a little piece of paper because you're only covering a journal this size, you might want a little bit of a smaller brush. Okay, so this, there is no rhyme or reason to this. This is just fun, um, layered, allowing the paint to mix while you're brushing it on. And what I'm gonna do, just again for technique purposes, is I am gonna wet half of my paper. I want you guys to see the difference of working on a wet piece of paper and basic watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna wet, again, doesn't have to be completely covered. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want big puddles, but you definitely want to get a good bit of moisture onto your paper. So I am only gonna do this side for now, just so you guys can see the difference in how the paint works. You don't have to divide it perfectly, just kind of polish and wet just one side of your paper. And then I'm gonna do the exact same technique that we've been doing, just adding water to the side of the paint on your palette. And then in a few areas, this is gonna be so exciting, Emma, I'm just gonna to touch down. Oh, that looks so good. And you can see where it just, when the paper's wet, this is a really fun thing to remember. When the paper is wet, it's gonna bleed into the wet area. If the area is dry, you can see it's just gonna create a stroke. So that's the difference when working on wet and working on dry. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, reference to see both of them like that. This is that dark, dark, beautiful navy. I'm gonna add water to that. And I'm just gonna kind of let it do just really a squig squiggle stroke and just <laughs> let that bleed out. I was so excited about what it was doing. I didn't know how to describe it. But you can see it softens those edges automatically. You can put one next to the blue and you can see how it'll bleed into there just a little bit. Little more water to that dark navy. Just gonna do a little dot over here so you guys can see the difference. Dry and wet paper. I'm gonna clean that brush and I'm gonna go into the or into the light lavender and just do another little area. Just really random patterns that then bleed together. That looks awesome, Kirsten. Love it's that. almost like a tie-dye look, which is really, really yeah. unique and fun for on paper. 
I love that, Kirsten. And while you're doing that, Gail said, I uh, had a comment. They said um, there was a Michaels class doing something with decorating cups um, with some kind of paint, maybe Mod Podge. I can't remember, but I did see a class on it. Uh, I don't know exactly what class you're talking about, but I know we did teach a class um, a week or two ago featuring our brand new folk art terracotta paint, which we're super excited about over here at Plaid. Um, we took recycled jars like olive jars and mason jars and pasta sauce jars, and we used our brand new terracotta paint, which is a multi-surface paint paint it's indoor outdoor and when you paint it on it makes any surface look like a uh like unfinished terracotta, like unfinished ceramic. It is really, really cool. Um, and it's a great way to upcycle maybe some thrift store um, pieces of pottery or glassware um, and, and give it a whole new life. So um, I wish I knew the exact class you're talking about. The first one that popped into my head was that one. So if you haven't seen it, um, we talk all about our brand new terracotta paint. So go check that out on Michael's YouTube channel if you haven't. It's a great class. And it's the greatest paint ever we have. We are all painting absolutely everything with that. Oh, you know what else they might have been, Emma? We taught, huh. um, I think we had a coffee mug class with Mod Pot. I always say it wrong. Oh, Mod yeah. Pot dishwasher safe. And it was super fun because we used that tape. The yes, pattern we tape. washi tape. That's a fun class too that we just recently did. You're totally right. That's on Michael's. That's on Michael's YouTube too. We showed how to make um, ceramic mugs, how to cover them in washi tape and napkins, and then seal them with Mod Podge dishwasher safe, which is top rack dishwasher safe once it's cured. Um, so we we did that in a class too. That was a lot of fun. So many classes. It's hard to remember. I know. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, all I am doing is just layering random strokes some areas are larger some areas are smaller and letting that water just pull everything together like right there was the first layer of color this area is wet with water and i'm just applying that aqua and see how it bleeds into different areas just giving you a really abstract almost a tie-dyed look i love that a tip with this technique is if an area dries out, go and add just a little bit more water. You don't have to overstroke the whole piece of paper, but just to the areas that have dried and then go right back in there and add some color. And you'll see, again, it'll go and touch the areas that you've already painted, but it'll give you this beautiful tie-dye look. Always clean your brush, even though you're working with so much water, because that will keep your paints beautiful and vibrant. This is just more of an abstract, fun, don't try to create an exact pattern. Just really let the colors that you choose, like this same technique would be beautiful if you did pinks and oranges. It'd be beautiful if you did even just grays and blacks, let the white of the paper show through. Any Here's palette. Oh, sorry. While you're no, doing no. that, we have a comment and a question. So Gail said, this is definitely my kind of painting. Love it. Love that, and Gail. It's fun. Yeah, it looks, it looks like a lot of fun. I'm jealous. Um, and then Tracy <laughs> said, can regular cardstock paper or construction paper be used as well? You know what? Construction paper, maybe. Um, it's been a minute since I've used it, but I know it definitely has that really matte finish. Um, watercolor paper is, of course, the best. And Michael's has it in so many different big pads, little pads, um, eight by 10, five by seven. And cardstock, it just would all depend. If it's sealed and um, a little bit glossy or a little bit satin, your paint would just move around more. But try it, it might be a similar look, but the more matte the paper is, the better. I just wanted to hold that up. And you can see before we add the Sharpie, it's really just a beautiful soft tie-dye mix of colors. You can just let that, maybe if you have a lot of paper or a lot of moisture on there, you can move it around a little bit, let some of the colors roll together, but just such a beautiful technique. Okay, so now I'm gonna set that one to the side to dry. 
And I actually wanna show you guys just a really quick bonus. This is not something that was in the photo, um, but just how easy it is to do a floral pattern using all of these techniques that we did today. So just a, again, another piece of paper, watercolor paper. I'm gonna dry off my brush. This is one of my favorite ways to do a really soft floral. Floral is sometimes so intimidating because you wanna get that flower exactly right. You wanna work on each petal. With watercolor, it's so much easier than that. So on this piece of paper, all I'm gonna do with water only is just wet little areas, just very random. And I'm going to envision that my wildflowers are growing up like a garden. This is the top. This is the grass. This is the sky. And my wildflowers are about in the middle of the paper. And I'm just putting water in a few random spots, not base coating, but just a few random spots. And then using that same brush, I'm going to go maybe into this magenta that we used. And I'm just going to add a little bit of pink there maybe a little bit there. You can see some touched the water, some didn't. Maybe a little splash of pink there. And you're just kind of tapping? Yep, I'm just really tapping the surface. And you can see there's where it went on a wet surface and there's where it went on a dry surface. Let me hold that up. Mm -hmm. But just the difference. I'm gonna go into that same pink. This is all one color and just tapping. Again, some went into the water and some didn't. I'm going to clean off that same brush and go into that yellow. You guys see, yeah, you can see my palette. And go into that yellow in a few different areas. I'm just going to tap. No rhyme or reason to any of that. I think that might be why I like watercolor so much. <laughs> And maybe a little bit of, not the green yet, maybe a little bit of that orange. And Kirsten, green while you're it. doing this, while you're doing this with the orange, remember when someone said earlier in the class, um, can you do this on fabric? We actually have a video of Kirsten doing this on fabric. <laughs> remember you did that floral tote bag? Oh, Emma, Emma remembers everything. I do remember that. Um, okay. Oh, you know what, Emma, you're right. Yeah, and, what, and yeah. you wet, you totally, like uh, dampened your fabric first so yep. that the folk art multi-surface blended well, right? Yep, I think it's a video and a TikTok and you did, we worked on wet fabric and it was it was fun, it turned out really nice. Yeah, if you guys wanna check that out, it is on our Plaid Crafts on TikTok and I'm pretty sure it's also on the Plaid Crafts Instagram and it's a video of Kirsten painting a really gorgeous floral pattern on a little tote bag. So definitely check that out if you're interested on trying this uh, technique I again on some fabric. I told you I love watercolor. <laughs> so you can see it does not look like a beautiful floral pattern yet, but just wait. So you've just got a beautiful mix of pink, yellow, and orange in just a very, very loose pattern. You could have bigger areas. You could have smaller areas and just stick with that little tapping technique. But I've just got a variety of areas painted with floral colors. So now underneath my little area where my flowers grow. I'm just going to draw down some straight lines of just water. Again, not, not, not in a pattern, not exactly under anything, just more straight down dampening the area. And you can see that yellow jumped right onto that water and that's okay. That is not a mess up when you're doing a watercolor technique. I'm going to rotate my palette, the same beautiful green that we've been using. I'm just gonna mix a little more of that paint and I'm just gonna let that green touch both in the areas that are wet, like there it was dry, but you still get that beautiful soft watercolor look. There it's in the water, but just allowing that green, maybe give it a little base to sit on. See how the green is just kind of, it's blending into the yellow there, but not there. It's just giving you the representation of the bottom of the flowers. And then what I'm actually going to do is just going into that green in just a few areas, not on every flower. I'm just going to put a few sections of green. Only you know that this is going to be a floral pattern until we get the Sharpie to it. 
but see it it kind of well I told you so you know it's flowers but it looks like a really soft abstract even before we go in there and add the magic marker that's beautiful okay guys so that is the techniques that we learned the watercolor techniques now they're all they all should be dry if they're not one thing that you definitely want to do is you want to make sure that everything is dry. So I am actually going to hit this blue one, this abstract one, just for a minute with a blow dryer. So if any of your um, pieces of art are wet, hit those really quickly with a blow dryer to get those dry. And then our little bonus flower one, I'm gonna dry that. All right, I think those are dry. And you know what, Emma? I actually just learned something really fun. Ideally, all the projects that we do, letting them air dry is what you would want to do, but the acrylic dries super fast. But hitting the watercolor with a blow dryer, sometimes you just blow a little bit of your color around, which is a really unique effect. I kind of like that, yeah. I know. So like that little area, the air kind of scooted the paint around. Just another fun watercolor technique. <laughs> okay, so now all we are doing, you guys, is having fun. The second step of this is using a black permanent marker. Um, but with everything, if you wanted to use a few different color permanent markers, if you wanted to use a paint marker that maybe has a thicker tip, whatever you want to do to add doodles over your watercolor, we're going to do just a really fun pen and ink look. So this is the first journal that we did today. This is just this really fun. It's a little bit like a solar system, but also just a little bit abstract. I did a moon and some stars. So what I'm gonna do is just really, you can doodle on a separate piece of paper first. You can um, maybe follow some patterns that you find on the computer, but don't apply a pattern. Really just have fun doodling over this. I don't want you to have pencil down there that, that you then have to trace. So for something like this, Every time I, I do something that would require a pattern, I want you guys to break it down in your mind. Like all that is, is a circle. So I'm just gonna take this Sharpie black marker and draw a circle. Not perfect, I didn't have to trace anything. And then you can see those little lines is just a really soft zigzag pattern inside that circle. And then instead of coloring it in, I'm just gonna put little lines. You want it to look really loose and fun, like a fun pen and ink that you have done. You don't wanna fill it in. You just want all of that beautiful color to show through. And maybe up here, half on the plain white paper and half on the yellow. I'm just gonna do a really wavy circle. Then I do another one kind of overlapping it a little bit and maybe a third, but no rhyme or reason to any of that. Just a really fun doodle. That's awesome. And then I'm just, and I, oops, go sorry. ahead, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to tell everyone too, we we're talking about that tote bag and I uh, put the link to the TikTok video in the chat if you guys wanna check that out. That's awesome, Emma, thank you. That was a fun project. I totally forgot about it. but just adding some dots and some squiggles. I'll hold that up. That looks Let's great. Let's see how it just makes the colors more vibrant. It just adds some personality. 
you can go in, this one was kind of fun. It's just little V's in a circle pattern. So right over this yellow dot, I'm just gonna fill it in with just random shapes that just give it some dimension. You don't wanna line them up exactly. When you're doing watercolor or pen and ink or something fun like this, you just want it to be really organic. Doing the Sharpie at the end is so much fun. When we were getting ready for this class, someone said it would be so fun for maybe the mom or the sister to do the watercolor part and then give a marker and the artwork to a kid and just let them doodle on top of it. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I love that idea. And it would be like a great present, like a great little note card for grandma and grandpa or somebody like that when you both work together and do it. Oh my gosh, it would be, I would never want a store-bought card again <laughs> as a mom. I would love that. Moms love something made. And just to show you guys some more of the patterns, like this was real. can you guys see that? This was really simple and easy. All I did is some basic stars. Don't apply any kind of pattern. Just doodle those right over your watercolor art. Maybe I'll do one more way over here. And then I'm just gonna connect those with a dashed line. Just a really fun way to doodle over a simple pattern. And you could do so much on this. You would not have to do stars and moons and planets. You could do flowers, you could do words, whatever inspired you. But the black is so beautiful with the folk art as a watercolor. That's great. Okay, so that's one of the techniques that we did. And then for the rainbow, and that's totally dry. And you can see it dries always a little bit different than when it was wet, but you get these beautiful edges, how it all blend together just beautifully. My little stack of paper, let's see what I got. Okay, so on this one, we just added our favorite phrase. So you could put a name on there, you could put a monogram. It's actually really kind of cute just as it is, but all you would do is add words over the top, Let's see, I'm gonna add something different. You can even do a script font. So whatever you're in the mood to do, to personalize it. And then I'm just gonna do, make the downstroke a little bit thicker. So when you're writing in cursive, the downstroke is when your hand moves down. And I'm just gonna thicken up that section of the word and not coloring it in completely, but just doing little strokes or little, um, almost like marks. Hash marks. Yeah, inside that section of the letter. That's when my hand would go down. And then this part of the V, my hand would go down. But you're just doodling it. You want it really organic. Right here, my hand, my stroke would go down a little bit. And then on this part of the E, it would go down. But almost just sketchy, scribbly in that section. So just personalizing it however, however you want to. But again, the black is just so pretty over the watercolor. Okay, so that was one. And then this one is just so simple, really, um, really ge geometrical, really um, trendy, just great shapes, almost like a geo, but not. And all you need to do on this, you could use a ruler, you could use another piece of paper, you could use an edge of your journal. And I'm just gonna focus on, I'm gonna start up on this corner and I'm just gonna use the edge of this paper to make very random lines. No rhyme or reason to any of it, just creating a really beautiful pattern that's unique and modern. A bunch I love of that technique things. to use that paper as your straight edge. Well, I just kind of fun, huh? Yeah, it's a great idea. 
I might be doing it because I had a ruler here and it's under all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fun way to do it though, because you can have different length pieces of paper. You can, um, oh, look, see, so just very random. I don't want you to overthink this because I want it to look almost like a crystal or a rock or a geode that's just got some unique shapes just on the edge. But see when it goes over that beautiful tie-dyed watercolor pattern, how unique yes. that looks. I love and then that. just like I did on this one, I'm gonna scoot down to this side, but I'm actually gonna flip my paper over and I'm gonna just do a larger section of again, just really unique angles and shapes and triangles. But knowing that these are just things that we want to inspire you guys with. If you wanted to do stars on this technique or, um, gosh, there's so many things, flowers, stars, animals. There's so many ways to doodle over the top of these beautiful watercolor finishes. And Kirsten, we're doing great on time. We have about uh, eight minutes left. And I know some Perfect. people just wanted to catch the gist of how to attach this um, beautiful paper to their notebooks. Yep, that's what we are about to do. Awesome. Okay, so just fun with the ink. Okay, so let's start with this little notebook. Maybe we'll add our stars and our planets to that. So if you haven't cut it already, a fun thing to do is find the spot on your art that you maybe like best or that you want on the front and then open up your notebook if you're going to cover the front and the back or just make a pattern for the top if you're only going to cover the top. Spiral notebooks, anything like that, we just covered the top, but a notebook that wraps all the way around that has a smooth, a smooth middle, you could cover the top and the bottom. So decide if you're going to cover the top and the bottom on this one I'm going to and open it up and just lay out what you want to be the front. I think I like that better. So I want that to be my front. And then using a pencil, I am going to trace the edge of that notebook. And again, it's open. So you're tracing the front and the back. So you've got a really light pattern and then just using some basic scissors. Now the key to this, the only thing that matters here is cut from left to right where your notebook opens, cut a little bit larger than your pencil pattern. Top to bottom, follow your pencil line, but left to right where your notebook opens, cut it a little bit wider or a little bit larger. Does that make sense, Emma? Yeah, you just want to give it room to open and close. Exactly. Right? So I'm a little bit wider than my pencil pattern on the left and the right where it opens and closes. Not much, just maybe an eighth of an inch. And then I'm exactly on my pattern for the top and the bottom of the journal. And Kirsten, while you're cutting that out, um, Gail had a question. What would you have as an idea to doodle on top of your um, floral watercolor? Oh, we're going to do that. I hope we have a minute. We're going to do that at the <laughs> end because that's my favorite. A floral is okay. my favorite of anything. Okay. So once you've got your journal on there or your paper on there, flip it over, open up your journal, make sure you've cut it right, and then hold it on there, but shut it with kind of a hard edge and press that down in the middle. Maybe on both sides, just kind of press that down. And then what I like to do is hold it and kind of mark where that extra paper is. Because now that you've got it folded, you'll know, oh, that one was perfect. And now all I'm gonna do is trim that one more time now that we've folded it around the actual journal. You're just using that cover to make your pattern. Some journals have those little rounded edges, some don't, but just use the journal as your pattern. Press that on there. Look, it's already so cute. 
I'll take it to my next meeting. (laughs) Okay. And then the tip that we have is we love to use just basic tacky glue from Michael's. There's a million different ones. We love the Delta. Um, We love the Aileen's tacky glue, but a tip when using glue, especially on something like this, is we like to put a dot of hot glue. Hot glue is great because it dries instantly and it gives your basic tacky glue a minute to dry. So all I'm gonna do, I think, oh, hang on, let me get a new one. All I'm gonna do is apply a little bit of the basic craft tacky glue to most of the cover. And then I always love to put a few dots of hot glue. Again, not everywhere, but maybe in the four corners, maybe a little bit down the edge, because all that will do is secure your other glue and give it time to cure completely. And Kirsten, why? I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you in this class. No, no. Um, Why wouldn't you put hot glue on the entire thing? You can, the thing with the all-purpose tacky glue is it's just dried forever, it's permanent. Sometimes if your journal cover is maybe this, um, I don't know, like vinyl plastic, Mm -hmm. the hot glue will glue for a minute, but then it will pop right off. So depending on what your cover is, the tacky glue is just guaranteed to work perfectly. And then the hot glue is just a little way to cheat and let your all-purpose tacky glue dry perfectly overnight. So again, that's the all-purpose glue, just a nice tacky glue. And then the hot glue, just so then, so then you don't have to put something heavy on it. You don't have to, you know, push it down on something to let it dry. The hot glue does that for you. And then you've got this beautiful journal with personalized artwork on the front. So that's what you would do for all of them. And for the spiral notebooks, if you guys are doing this for back to school, the only difference is I just made a pattern for the front of that journal, but then attached it the exact same way. Any questions about getting it on your journal? I don't think so, Kirsten. Everyone's just saying how much they've enjoyed this class so much. Oh, I'm so glad. So do we have a minute? Can I do the flowers? Yeah. Okay. So this is our little abstract floral watercolor. Um, And here you could have maybe your, a reference of your favorite flower. Um, You could have some artwork of maybe an acrylic floral um, painting that you loved and really just use that as a guide. Like that's a larger flower that maybe looks like poppy. These are little buds that look like they're growing maybe on a stem. So for these larger flowers, I might just doodle it from the center, like the center of a rose just layering petal after petal. I went in here and popped these little areas of green. So I would be able to make that into a little leaf. These little pink ones that I just dabbed with the end of my brush look like they're growing on a little stem. So I'll just create a long stem that comes down. Maybe put a little uh, sprig in the center of a few of them. There's no green there but I could go in with just the marker and add a few little leaves. That little pop of green, I could make a leaf. Little dots are always fun, especially with pen and ink. This guy maybe could be even a daisy. And know when you're doing floral, don't don't think that you have to use that entire section of color as your flower. Like in this little yellow area, I could just do a little grouping of daisies. And that one happens to be yellow, but he bleeds into the pink. I could bring a stem down for him. Kirsten, but right while there. We, while oh, we're doing ahead. that, just since we're a little bit short on time, people are asking um, if you recommend a specific hot glue gun. And then they're also asking if there's a specific way that you would try to um, seal this. Oh gosh, we've never, I've never thought about sealing it. So the folk art acrylic is super durable. Um, You wouldn't have to seal it, um, but I guess to get wear and tear and keep it a little bit more durable, if you're using it at your desk, you could seal it with our Mod Podge Ultra, which would be a great way to seal it. Um, It's just one of our fabulous Mod Podge formulas. That's matte or satin. That would seal it beautifully. 
Um, what was the other question, Em? There was one more. Is there a specific hot glue gun you would recommend? You know what? We have so many different ones here in the content studio and they all seem to work. There's hot, there's high heat and low heat. High heat, we always use just because it secures a little bit better and a little bit um, a little bit stronger, but really all the hot glue guns work the same. Okay, I'm just adding a few little doodles just so you guys can see to just have fun with this floral one. Like really loose petal areas, maybe a few long leaves, but don't, the only tip to this is don't limit yourself to where color is. Put color or put doodles, I mean, both on the paper, both next to the areas, but just all over to create that really soft, beautiful garden. See how that little one is going over both paper and yellow. You can just add, you could add a butterfly. This would be the greatest um, little greeting card to send somebody. Oh, floral, that's my favorite. But see how just the color and then the permanent marker makes such a beautiful piece of art. Okay, Emma, any that's, questions now that we've made all these beautiful journals? I don't think so, Kirsten. Everyone's just saying um, how much they enjoyed this class, how they hope that we have more classes like this. They really, really enjoyed it. I'm glad. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget, tag Plaid Crafts and Michael's. I forget. Make it with Michael's. Make it with Michael's because we love to see everybody's stuff. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye.